What's up guys and welcome to Headphones Neil Reviews and the second part of my 10 part reviews for the Knott's 100 year anniversary celebration. So for the second part of this set of reviews, I wanted to actually review the Boysenberry Festival that's currently going on. I think it ends in about mid-April, so if you're listening to this um, up until then, then you still have time to check it out. Um, so it's not necessarily a spoiler alert, but I do definitely want to say that if you're a fan of the Knott's Berry Farm, farms in general, some of their main special events, which I guess are their individual main events because they do one at a time, then definitely check out their Boysenberry Festival because it feels like they're going kind of all out, but it's a unique experience for a theme park. So the first thing you'll notice when you get to the park and as soon as you walk through the gates is their entrance um, that they have set up for all their special occasions. So you see kind of a farm style setup, um, um, fruits and vegetables and trees, and basically just a farm style setup basically to give you a reminiscent feel of a festival. They do have photographers there to help take your pictures or you could just do it yourself if you want to just do that. So either way goes but it's a nice fun farm style celebration and setup and definitely worth checking out just for that photo opportunity. So the first thing I recommend doing after that is heading to your left to Ghost Town because they've actually set up the sign with the Ghost Town entrance sign with Boysenberry. So a little bit more festive set up there. And as you walk through Ghost Town, that's where you're going to get most of the experience for the festival. So um, the other photo opportunity is all the way over to the left beyond the Ghost Rider ride uh, where you'll get, you know, little... Um, area where you get some stalls and stands with various setups kind of like you see at a farmer's market so um, you definitely get that good look and feel with different wares and vendors and things like that and you get a little get up or set up with in front of a mine shaft which is actually the only thing that didn't quite work with me it was a nice setup as far as have photo opportunity but it feels like it's something they could have built into the ghost rider ride because they already have uh, rocks and um, decorations and various things set up so it feels like they could have built this um, photo opportunity around that but needless to say what they have works with the theme of the area so um, that's your second photo opportunity so now if you head back towards the entrance and once you get to the gold trails uh, motel or hotel um, definitely you can stop for in the store to check out some of the stuff there but you also have a few more decorations there Nothing really to phone home about is probably the least of all the decorations, but they kind of did something just to show that something was done kind of thing. Um, so don't go past the hotel. For, well, when you get there, make a left down that street and you'll get a lot more vendors and restaurants and a few more decorations and things like that um, where they have, you know, another set of flowers set up so you can have another photo opportunity. Check them out. It looks really nice and it gives you a very... Old West style um, set up a look and feel of the town getting into the spirit of the season and that sort of thing um, and that's really the bulk of it um, you, or sorry that's not the bulk of it there's a few more things so if you go around the corner past the birdcage theater and then make a right um, instead of making a so instead of making a left towards uh, the not Bigfoot Rapids but whatever the new name of the ride is if you make a ride and head towards the saloon is where you'll get a few more shops and vendors they didn't really do too much at the graveyard to decorate that up but you get a few more stalls and vendors and things like that as you head towards the saloon um, and then at the corner of the saloon you do have a ni another nice little floral arrangement and setup and all of that so um Ghost Town is pretty much um, set up for the spirit of this particular uh, festival. And then the kind of end point of all of that is um, as you're heading towards the entrance to the Calico train, you'll see a, a couple of like a, a, a rooster and a hen with some decorations. So that's kind of the limit of all the decorations on that side. And then you can, of course, head back to the right, back towards the saloon to... Um, check out some of the rest of the decorations and events and things that are going on but pretty much ghost town is entirely self-encompassing as far as all the 
uh, boysenberry decorations and celebrations and things like that go. Um, if you're like me and you're expecting um, the boardwalk and roaring 20s area, area to have uh, more of the decorations, you're not really going to get too much aside from the truck and the flowers and stuff like that that's right in front of the entrance to um, Berry Tales. Um, you have a few other decorations up that are um, up and around. It's kind of already themed that, that way, so um, they didn't really do too much here, but I would have expected that they had, would have had more stalls and stands or something more going on in this area as well because it would, feels like it would have fit perfectly there. Um, so really, Berry Tales is really the only ride and you know, built-in theming to the park where you can get that sort of experience. That's not necessarily festival related, but if you want to have a ride that's related to, you know, berries or boysenberries, then Berry Tales is the way to go. So that's really the bulk of it. Um, there's not really too much going on on the boardwalk area as far as the festival goes. It's pretty much unthemed. Um, same thing with Fiesta Village. That's pretty much still under construction. Um, the spinning ride, I think La Revolution is um, open. Jaguar was back open. Um, they're still, I guess, um, Accelerator is still closed. Hangtime was open and they didn't really do too much there for theming. Um, but everything else for Fiesta Village is kind of um, still a work in progress. When you're, you know, if you're on, if you go up on Silver Bullet and you're at the top, you can still see all the construction that's going on. But all the signs do still say, you know, ex um, coming soon, summer of 2023. So uh, look out for all of that coming soon, but not really too much on that side. Now, if you head into the Camp Snoopy area, they didn't really do too much um, around all the rides that are there. But um, from the entrance, if you make an immediate right, uh, the entrance of the park, if you make an immediate right, then you'll see a little rabbit with some flowers set up, which is a nice, not necessarily a good photo op, but it was good enough. Um, there are a better, a few era, other areas and creatures set up throughout the rest of Camp Snoopy if you want a better photo op. Um, notably in the little river area, just past the hot air balloon ride off to the right, um, they have a, you know, a rabbit and a couple of other creatures, a whole bunch of carrots set up. Um, so that's probably the better area for the photo op. Um, so they made a more Easter theme, that, in my opinion, but um, just because more of, I guess for me, is more because it's a more, it's a kid's area, so they made it more fun and kids themed and kids related. Well, so Easter kind of works as a better setup, but it's kind of like a two for one deal. You have a boysenberry festival in Ghost Town for the adults, and then you have all this Easter theming and setup for the kids in Camp Snoopy. So um, I only have a photo of one of those rabbit creatures just for as, as an example and then the carrot set up next to the water area but there's a, as you're walking through the area you'll see those setups if you want a picture with them then um, there you pick the photo op that's best for you kind of thing but um, nothing really stood out for me but that's just me kind of thing so um, there is that um, so that's really the bulk of it um, as far as recommendations for some of the stuff that's there, um, I did have a chance to try their deep fried ravioli with the boysenberry marinara sauce, which had a very good flavor to it. Um, it was not necessarily spicy, but it had a good, it was um, spicy enough to, to the point where it gave it some really good flavor. So I do definitely recommend having that for lunch. I didn't try like the pizza or anything else for um, that sort of stuff as far as actual food goes, but I hear good things. Um, for dessert, there was the poison or the churro filled with the boysenberry sauce, so that was actually really good. I think last year I caught the tail end of the, fest the festival, so I had the boysenberry self-serve or the soft serve, and I actually liked that at the time as well, so I can say that I recommend that as far as ice cr an ice cream style dessert goes. And then, of course, for all the adults, um, if you do have drinks, um, I recommend the boysenberry mojito. Um, I didn't really feel like having a beer, um, so I didn't get that. But the, the mojito actually did sound pretty good, so I'd recommend that. They didn't make it too strong or too sweet, so it was a good balance of flavor and alcohol and all that. So um, didn't really give me a buzz or anything like that. Um, then again, we did walk it off throughout the rest of the day in the park, and it was a warm, sunny day, so there's probably that as well. But in general, um, for me, I recommend the mojito. So um, that's as far as drinks go. So um, 
in general, it seems like it's one of the better fest, or I mean, not one of the better festivals, but it's a good theming thing as far as following up from the peanut celebration. So you move from a more kid focused um, setup for the park into a more not necessarily adult, but more generally broad avail broadly available theming for the park. So they have all sorts of different boysenberry themed foods and souvenirs. And um, all the stalls definitely felt like you're at a street fair or a street festival or um, I guess the best comparison for me is Back to the Future 3 when they're in the Old West town and um, they go to the clock tower uh, coronation ceremony. So kind of it's kind of that feel when you're in, going through the ghost town area that it's a lively feel. Um, you have all these street vendors and then all the shops and everything is themed and all of that. So I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, in the, or uh, as always, I'll have in the link for the show notes on the podcast feed and the video version now. Um, I'll have a link to the photos that I took so you can check out some of the various shots that I took so you can see kind of the major decorations. Um, I didn't, or I did take a couple of the floral arrangements, but um, I also have a video of a quick walkthrough I did from the Calico or the Golden Trails Hotel all the way around to the uh, Calico Saloon. So you can kind of get a uh, look and feel and sounds and all the various sensory experiences of the vibe of the Boysenberry Festival. So you get a visual feel of that if you the pictures don't quite do it justice. So definitely recommend checking that out. And then I also have a view from uh, Berry Tales because I kind of wanted, because I was expecting something in the Berry Tales area or more decorations, I thought I would do a video facing outward from the ride to the park. And I actually was hoping that I could could, uh, could have had a video of um, Silver Bullet, Hang Time, and Supreme Scream all running at the same time. But all I got was Hang Time running. So there's that, the American flag waving in the wind. And just a general, more of a quiet side to the park from the angle of Berry Tail. So that'll be, I'll be in a link for the photo gallery post. Um, also stick a direct link to those videos um, in the show notes for the video of the podcast and the audio feed as well. So you have a direct link to, to those as well. But um, yeah, so that's really all there is for this. So if you're a fan of Boysenberry, um, Knott's Berry Farm, um, and generally some of the things that they do, then I'd recommend the festival. Um, if anything, it's if you're not someone who pr likes to go on rides and you prefer, you know, this kind of thing, then you really only need maybe a couple of hours, maybe four hours, you could stretch it out a little bit. But if you're more of just, you know, walking around and getting a feel for the experience, stopping at various stalls and stands and things like that and going shopping and that sort of thing, then you really only need a couple of hours, you know, just go through the area, go through Ghost Town, grab some food, um, check out the various stores, relax in the saloon, um, check out the shows. Um, I think they have a special show, or actually I don't know if it's a special show in the Birdcage Theater, but you know, if you check out some of the shows and things like that, you could easily spend a few, like two to three hours in the area and just relax, walk around, experience and all of that. But it is a beautiful setup and I do recommend checking it out. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, did you go and what did you think of it and all of that sort of stuff, all the links to the social media networks that I'm on can be found at the website at headphonesneal.reviews, um, which also has links to ways to support the show and give a little back if you liked this review and that sort of stuff, along with subscription links for uh, links to the past episodes, the YouTube channel, and all of that good stuff. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.